So um, I talked about panic selling, and now I guess I'll give you a little bit of advice um, from my personal opinion of what's happening right now. Number one, there's two types of items, and one type of item are going to be highly desirable items. This would be including a Soul Ring Masterpiece. Okay, Soul Ring, probably playable in every EDH deck. I don't know what EDH, EDH deck would not play. Maybe some type of anti-artifact deck or something. Uh, Mana Crypt Invention, also very, very impressive. Mana uh, Vault Invention, very impressive. Mato Bowl Invention. Four of them came for buy list. Now, the buy list was a little higher than, I mean, not surprisingly high, but typically when I get a buy list card, they come with like a bunch of junk. junk. And to get these four cards, I have to buy another, at least two times the value in jank. Today, that's not true. People are selling their most valuable collect. So there are two types of collectible items right now. Unique items are highly valuable items that are actually rare. This could be dual lands, this could be uh, moxes, this could be power nine, actually rare things. And then there's a second item thing, it's things that people believe were, was rare, like let's say War of the Sparks booster box, or Modern Horizon booster box, or standard booster boxes, or the recent Pokemon packs that they bought from Target, and they're not rare. Because everyone in their grandmother is trying to email me about the same list of items. So again, there are items that I never see, that I will snap by which would be the inventions the not I'm the, okay so the high end inventions let me be very clear it's you champion's helm a $50 invention you're going to see a bunch of them i think i have like 6 or 8 of them they just come in these collections and it's like whatever right and then there's some other inventions that are not very valuable and you're going to see a lot of them the same with invocations the same with you know the, you're going to see a lot of just shady cards and then, but I've never seen someone buy a Soul Ring invention until just recently. I've never seen them do a Mana Crypt, and I've never seen them do a Mox Opal or any of it. These are the inventions I actually need to complete my collection, but I never come across them because if I had to pay retail for them, you know, the other card I, I've now acquired, buy list by the way, is Liliana. Yes, the Liliana with the, um, the Japanese Liliana. A month ago, I was complaining, oh, I would really love to see the card, blah, blah, blah. Well, I got it. I buy list. And people are like, oh, you can go to this store to buy it. I was like, no, F that. I'm not going to do that. The, the price came down and the buy list came down. I offered buy list plus 10% and now I have one. Now the question is, can I get four? Well, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see how long this recession goes. But those cards are highly desirable cards. They could be underground seas. I can take any amount of those at buy list. I can take any amount of power nine. I can take any amount of buy list of whatever this stuff is. Then there's the stuff that people are really panicking over and they're not gonna even get 20% of what they paid in. These tend to be standard sealed boxes. This tends to be standard cards. Um, and right now, so what it used to be is, oh, you put in one so ring and you put in another $2,500 of like just shitty cards. And I buy it because I need to get the so ring. Now I don't need to get that. Now a guy will sell me four really great cards and that's it. I don't need to buy these crappy collections no more. Your crappy collection is worthless now. Okay, I understand what's happening because there are people who just sell me the good stuff now. And I don't need to buy the crap of your stuff. And this works in anime figures. You know, I have a very good example of a young lady and she's been contacting me for the last God knows how long. And the price that she has is just so bizarre and unreasonable that like, you just cannot do, because if you have two, if you have 10 emails and her price is so much higher than everyone else's email for that these anime figures if you will across the board like you just have to tell them hey you know it's not gonna work don't email me no more um so there are two types of items rare items like an inuyasha uncut sheet 
very mother effing expensive. I mean, it's probably one of the most expensive things I bought, but I've never seen one before. And when's the next time I will see one? I don't know, because this is a card game I loved and it happened to be printed in 2004, 2005. And even the frames were pretty expensive for what they were. The frames were expensive for what they were. Um, and I put a lot of money behind it. And I even bought the first edition in your box boxes and whatever. I, I was just like, here, here's the situation. Here's the honest to God truth. I probably spent more money than I should have, but it's the type of item I would do that too. I'm not going to do that for like your collection of modern horizon boxes. I'm sorry, but your collection of Modern Horizon boxes is really just everyone and their grandmother is sending me an email with Modern Horizon boxes right now. So you either have two items, one that's very unique and maybe there's a one-on-one, -on -one. I will pay a premium, I will pay whatever it takes to get that item and own it. The second is an item I typically don't see by itself, like a soul ring. A soul ring is such a good example, of the invention soul ring is such a good example, you never see that card. Why? Because, you know, when somebody pulls it, it goes straight into EDH deck and stays in the EDH, the EDH deck forever. That card is being pulled away from that deck and being sold for money, which indicates that, hmm, that's very interesting, isn't it? Like, and Power 9, obviously, I've accumulated quite a bit of Power 9, including Black Lotuses and so on. You know, I'm okay with the drop in prices because that just means I can double dip. I can just buy more and more and more and more and more. Remember, I bought $20,000 of dual lands and that's when Underground Sea was $200. And the rest of them, I think Volcanic was like more expensive. There was like one above 200, I forget which one it was, but probably Volcanic. But I bought, I bought a hundred dual lands or a hundred and like 20 dual lands for $20,000. That offer is still, it's, you know, within maybe a month of more of Joe Biden, maybe November elections, I could probably do that again. There might be another collection because at the time the buy list might be $200 for Underground C. And, you know, obviously they're not all $200. They're going to be a lot less, 100, 150. At that time, there was actually no buy list. We just had to go off eBay comp uh, to get eBay comp minus eBay fees is how we got to $200 per Underground C. Yeah, I mean, I think it will be a very, people are very panic selling because they bought too much. That's how I put it. During the great uh, stimulus money or P free PPP loans, if you own a business, free checks, free unemployment checks, you know, all, all, a lot of money was being spent uh, by the government at this time, a lot of people put their money, their money into cards. Well, those cards are worthless, right? If you put your money in the Luca base or something, like, I mean, the, how can I put this in simple terms? People are just finding out that the cards they bought at the height of the card market, whatever they were, are not worth anything. And many times I don't, I mean, it, it feels savage, but I don't want to be the one who breaks the news because then they get really angry at me and they troll me for hours and on end and they leave bad reviews and stuff. So I don't even respond to those emails. When somebody says, hey, you know, I bought this card at, or I bought this at a thousand dollars. I would like a thousand and a hundred dollars. I would like $1,100, you know, a little bit of money for my effort. And the card is like a Luca PSA 9 that's now worth like $200. It's actually better to just not even respond because this, prob this guy has probably emailed a lot of people and whoever responds back to him to notify, oh, this card's not worth anything. I can give you like 10 bucks for it. That's gonna be the one that he gets very angry at and fights for multiple days. So I've experienced that myself. If the seller is unholy unreasonable, uh, I don't, you know, I don't, I just make, oh, I bought this collection. I don't have any money left. That's not actually true, but it's a whole lot better than the guy just hating on you for like two weeks straight is, and then just trying to destroy your business. So I, I don't even respond anymore. You know, that's the safest option is just, <laughs> you know, leave the, you read the email. Oh, this guy is, oh, he doesn't know the market's crashed. Okay. No response.
because it's likely he's emailed Rudy and so on. And whoever responds to this guy first, who has really, I mean, he's living back in the good days where the market was very hot and he would ask for more than the value. Um, I, I don't know what's going on here, but a lot of people are very angry. You know, they're very angry when I tell them go find. So I say go find a buy list. Um, and I get many texts too. And then they're like, so this kind of resolves the issue. Like, hey, I have this collection. What can you pay me? I say, oh, go find a buy list. And this solves my problem because then they're going to look at the, they're going to try to find the highest buy list. They're going to realize, uh oh, my car has lost 90% of its value. I don't want to sell it no more to you. I'm going to email some other idiot and say, I want, you know, $1,000 for my Luca PSA 8. And then when that, that idiot doesn't want to pay me or, or that person that is not an idiot doesn't want to pay me because it's way is 10 times over comp, then I'm just going to argue with him for the next two weeks. <laughs> People are very angry right now, guys. I mean, so I always say, just look at buy list and hopefully that kind of, um, that kind of educates, you got to educate them because if you don't educate the buyers, they, I've had this dude, he was super, it was a Rolex. I was, so in addition to cards, I'm buying Rolexes or whatever. Okay. And the dude, and I just said, no, I just said, no, I'm not going to do this deal. I don't like it to do a sell it. You know, again, I'm just very polite. And the guy is just raging for two weeks against me, just constant barrage of raging. And, you know, I spent so much time trying to make him feel better about the price of his Rolex, which like lost like 50% value. And, you know, and then eventually I, I just said, no, I'm not interested. And he was like, oh, well, you go, blah, blah, blah. But it was like the market price. And I actually ended up getting <laughs> that Rolex for cheaper, not his Rolex, but another Rolex for cheaper. Uh, maybe a, a few weeks later when the market continued to drop. So I think it's pretty savage. You know, people are not in a good mood when they hear that their valuable collector's item that they bought at the peak of stimulus money is not worthless. But not everyone's item is worthless. I mean, again, depending on what the item is. Bye, guys.